Hunting was a big business for Americans, as the pelts and furs of exotic animal breeds, hunted for centuries by Native Americans, were in high demand overseas. And while most Native hunters were careful to harvest every part of their kill, some Natives cashed in on the lucrative trade, hunting and trapping whatever sold for the biggest price without limit, in competition with the white man that savaged wildlife. This terrible, unchecked situation nearly wiped out the American deer population and sent many breeds of birds, mink, bear, wolves, and elk to extinction. Heading into the Gilded Age, reckless Americans had turned hunting into a blood sport. Nearly lost in the bloodbath was this magnificent beast, the bison, also known as the American buffalo. The story of their salvation from the brink of extinction is as dramatic as it is successful, and you never guess who some of the heroes are. Now, thanks to wildlife refuges like this one in the Flathead Indian Reservation, bison are numerous enough to be reintroduced to America's open plains, and in a few places, plentiful enough to be safely hunted once again. I tracked down Stephen Ranella, hunting expert and author, to ask him how that is possible. For instance, that guy right there. Yeah. He is a pronghorn right there. Yeah. Can go anywhere he wants, and he's protected as wildlife. Those cattle are privately owned. The buffalo here are somewhere between in status, in legal status. They sit somewhere between that pronghorn and those cattle. It's treated as wildlife when it's here. If it jumps the fence, it becomes livestock. That's crazy. Yeah. That antelope, when he jumps the fence, he's still a wild animal protected by the state. One of the saviors of our bison was La Tati, or Little Falcon Robe of the Ponder Ray tribe, who was the first to bring bison to the Flathead Reservation to start this great herd. How often is bison on the menu in your household? Rarely. Rarely? Yeah. I mean, we ate a pretty heavy duty when I got one. <laughs> that was all we ate for a long time. They issued 24 permits for a hunt in Alaska called DI-454. DI-454 is for a herd of 100 and 300 animals. That This was actually the source herd for that herd. Then there are a handful of places around the country, the Henry Mountains in Utah, the North Rim of the Grand Canyon, a variety of places in Alaska and elsewhere where you have legitimately wild, free-ranging herds managed as game animals. How do we re regain the amount that we have today? Let's say we take a key figure like Theodore Roosevelt. He came out to kill one when everyone thought they were gonna be gone and he just wanted to get his share. Yeah. But something about the activity inspired in him a desire to keep it going. So the same people that are going out and hunting them are also the ones that say like, I've grown to have an appreciation for this. We can't just... It was rebuilt by hunters. And I'm not saying like, you, yo, hooray for us, we're so great. We caused the problem. We caused the problem, and then as a group, yeah. created mechanisms to rectify the situation. This video is inspired by our PBS series, Reconnecting Roots. Visit ReconnectingRoots.com to watch the full episodes or to check out our music and podcast. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe so we can keep making more. Thanks for watching.